Hey, it's Chris again, and I thought I would, you know, just go over the code again. This is, will be a, hopefully a short episode, and I will name it in the title, you know, just recap or something, to let you know that. Okay, so, you should know Java before you even attempt this, you should know what this is. Um, here we basically just cl create a new main class object and then run it or call the run function method sorry uh, in the init we pass in a width and a height and then we get all the display mode the available display modes which is pretty much just a you know diff the different uh, resolutions to screen for screens so uh, yeah um, then we loop through e each e on every display mode and we check for a mode that has the width of our given width and the height of our given height and then the bits per pixels as our given value there and then if we find that mode we set our display to that mode if none is found uh, what happened to me when that happened uh, is that the display was uh, automatically set to the biggest freaking display available I think it was like full screen uh, so yeah if that happens and it shouldn't happen then you know why uh, then we set a title and then we create the display All right. this code I don't think you actually need it and uh, I like to add it just because to keep my you know to keep me uh, so I still are familiar with OpenGL just to uh, you know so I don't forget it right and you know we just set a matrix mode to the projection matrix and then we we'll, uh, clear that matrix then we create it to the OpenGL screen and we set its start coordinates at zero uh, and then its width to the width and then the height to the height and then its starting y and then the depth which is set to you know we don't use any depth right then we clear the model view matrix and then we s enable alpha testing so we can have transparency and then we enable texture 2D so we can use textures and then we clear the background color to some bluish color and then we load a texture and you know here's the texture bank so we create a hash map of, tex uh, of strings as the key and texture as the object and that texture object is taken from the slick library then we you know try that's just because java is safe we try to uh, load a texture of the ping type um, we create a new file, file input stream set the path the path we have given here and then we check if it's not null if it's not null we add a texture to our bank and then we return true you know else return false we should probably add that too um, or else you know it will return false down here anyway so and then catch stuff and then to get the texture we should make sure that the texture contains the key we have given so we don't get a run runtime crash you know and then if it's found we return the texture okay back to our main class in the run we try to init just because the init throws a logical exception and then while running we check if we want if the display is close requested so if we click the little X button up here then set run into false if not display update the display input update and render methods are called and then when the what when we end this while loop we clean up the code or we clean up is pretty much just destroying the display right and then in the input we check if keyboard dot is key down and then keyboard dot key, uh, the f5 key and then we set run, running to false uh, in the render we clear the color buffer and then we clear the matrix uh, the model view uh, matrix uh, the you know the yeah so uh, I ha 
before when I didn't do that um, the mouse location relative to the screen uh, wasn't really proper uh, you know you could have an object you know up here and that its position should be you know maybe 32 0 and then you can have the mouse at 32 0 but when you viewed at it the mouse was like over here so it, you know it wasn't true to the uh, to the actual rendering uh, and that's quite a problem so i just add that to make sure that doesn't happen and then we bind the player texture and then we render a quad a square now what i was thinking the major part is actually ex re-explaining how <laughs> this works because i did a bad job last time okay i'm gonna create a screen here then i gonna attempt to paint so you understand how our view looks like alright so in this corner this corner has the uh, coordinates of 0, zero. this corner has the coordinates of 640, 480 okay? now I created I started rendering my vertex my first vertex at 100 and 100 and you know we could pretend it's somewhere here so that's a hundred hundred okay and then my next vertex was added 13200 so that could be over here right and then my third vertex was added 32 pixels down of that so that's down here And then my fourth was added here at 100, 132. Now, why I added this in this order is because um, when I didn't, at least um, when I used thir 3D, the faces w weren't really, you know, they could end up looking like this a triangle with an extra face so it looks like that and that's ugly that's not a cube or square or whatever so you know you have to add it in this particular pattern so you start either up here and then go like this or you go up, start up here and go like this or that there and go like that I guess that's fine but I always do it like this and that's that works you know so I'll stick to it um, so that should create square like so okay now the texture er, every image and texture is also a square shape so this is the texture I used and the same with the texture now these zero zero coordinates are up here and the 32 32 coordinates are down here the width that's my texture I used a texture that that was 32 by 32 pixels wide so the zero zero is up here and and the width and height is down here and the texture coordinates in OpenGL are ranges from 0 to 1 right so 1 is equal to in this case 32 and 0 is equal to 0 so my for my first vertex I want the coordinates of 0 0 this corner so I set that to the first corner uh, vertex for the next coordinates I want I wanted the uh, the um, cor I wanted the coordinate coordinates for the you know for this corner so I used 1 as the X and 0 as the Y 
actually they are called S and T but you know for to make it simple I call them X and Y and for the third vertex which was this vertex I needed this corner which was set to 1 and which is 1 and 1 and then for the third or fourth I needed this corner which is 0 1 okay now that's because I wanted my full texture if you want to tile it you have to probably create some sort of uh, algorithm where you divide this one by the number of frames and then s number of you know frames and then set it texture map it to the right frame we might cover that later uh, I'm actually gonna try and create some simple game here but yeah so this was a bit recap a uh, short recap of the old code and I'll try to explain this better this time I hope you understand if you didn't you could go to Nihis site and that should make you understand so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time